Welcome back once again to the Hearthstone Championship Tour, America's Winter Preliminary. I'm TJ once again for the third time in the row, joined on the desk by Raven and Cora. I think this time we are finally going to get to cast a game. Third time's charm. Third yep. time's a charm. Oh, you just can't get rid of us. <laughs> yeah. We're not other. going anywhere. Yeah, keep trying to get them off the desk, <laughs> but they just keep coming back. Uh, but yeah, the next matchup is going to be between Muzzy from Team Hearthletics and uh, Kuk Lauren, who's uh, one of the uh, you know highest ranked and rated uh, Brazilian players uh, in the scene. So uh, we have their deck bands, and you can see on your screen there, a uh, warrior band for both mm -hmm. both players. And we have their their deck, their classes ready. And all the all three of their classes, <laughs> sorry, uh, are exactly the same. So we should be moments away from jumping in. Um, Raven, I'm going to ask you one more time. Who has the advantage when both players have the exact <laughs> same lineup? Uh, it is actually going to depend a certain amount on the way probably the Warlocks are built, actually. Okay. So I'm actually going to give you a serious answer uh, okay. as opposed to what I think okay. you're expecting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the, now that we're actually into the you're game, we can see that here. both players are very likely to be playing Zoo um, and both have pretty okay openings. I mean, like, Cora, you said you, you're a fan of Sea Giant. I uh, mean, did, I don't know about uh, you, but I'm, she, I'm seeing a Sea Giant She's a fan right of here. everything. <laughs> do, do I you, just like yeah, it yeah. all. <laughs> Do you, uh, do you like keeping Sea Giant in this opening? Because oh. I know this is something we actually discussed mm -hmm. a little bit earlier today. Absolutely. And I think you said, um, it was either you or TJ said, that you keep Sea Giant every time you play the mirror. Every time. Every single time. And yeah. it always works out. And you can see Kuglorin's got two one drops, two two drops. Muzzy also has a great curve. And he's going to be able to play that Sea Giant so much earlier than an 8-8 eight eight should be played. It is just phenomenal in the mirror. The, the thing is, that conversation originated wh when I was actually on a call with Muzzy. Really? So um, I, I was uh, trying to learn the new zoo, the Sea Giant Zoo with, with no Doom Guard. I was trying to learn it. I was like, Sea Giant seems so strong. As soon as Sea Giant hits the board, it feels like I win the game. Yep. And Musty's like, yeah. He said, in mirror matchups, keep it in the mulligan. And I was like, OK. And ever since then, I keep it in the mulligan. And I rarely lose to the standard version of Zoo with Zoom Guard, which it seems like Kuglorin is running. Uh, so we'll have to see if that's going to be the case this time, because Muzzy kept it. He yeah. does have that Sea Giant, but Kaglorin also has had a really nice opening, able to clear off that MK and boss relatively easy and going to break himself into Ruby and out of that egg. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. The only downside, I would say, was the Dark Peddler wasn't the most amazing choice yeah. of cards I've ever seen. When you when you pick Young Priestess, I mean, I've seen that card do some work, actually. I'm flashing back to, like, Raynad Zoo with the Young <laughs> Priestess and, like, the Clerics. Like, it's not bad. Yeah, I think um, he definitely wanted, like, the Power of Whelming, but what the good position here is, so is that he's got so much boss, damage represented on the board. It's one of those few opportunities where if the Sea Giant does come down soon, he does actually have a, a lot there to actually just take it off the board because mm -hmm. you do need to remove it. The second that gets Defender Vargas, it's a big wall to try and get through. Absolutely, and Kaglorin does have the Abusive Sergeant in hand, so if his board stays present, he's actually going to be able to clear off that Sea Giant relatively easily, like you said, which isn't what you want to happen when you play that minion down. You want to taunt it up. You want to make it even bigger and hit face with it so your opponent is the one that constantly has to deal with the pressure. Yeah, the thing is with Sea Giant, sometimes you have to do some complicated math, which is something that Zoo players sometimes don't have too much experience with. <laughs> Are you trying to insinuate Zoo is an easy deck where you just go face? <laughs> TJ, I no, don't like no, that. No, 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 <laughs> um, no. actually, Zoo is uh, one of the more complex decks to play because minion positioning matters. Mm -hmm. um, when to go face, when to trade, those types of things are uh, playing a huge factor in the outcome of these matches. So uh, I, I say it as a joke, but I, 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 I want to be clear. I, I do think that Zoo is a pretty complex deck to, to master. Yeah, and we see the, the sort of the effect the Sea Giant has in so this matchup where because both decks in the mirror want to or have to build the board to actually win the game uh, as they don't really run really any burn or direct mm -hmm. removal. Like Even if your opponent's clearing minions off your board, they're still throwing a lot more on their side as well. And the Sea Giant does affect from all of the minions on the board, not just your own. Yeah. Uh, now, one thing to note is there might be a situation where Sea Giant was not a good choice. Um, I said I keep it a lot, but there are some situations where you don't have a good curve before the Sea Giant. And we see this with Muzzy. He actually threw away a lot and kept the Sea Giant. He didn't have the Imp Gang boss, which is one of the cards mm -hmm. that makes it makes it strong. He didn't have the Implosion, which is another one of the cards that makes it strong. His one drops were a little late. You can see his Flame Imp's just coming in right now. So there might be a situation now where he just doesn't have time to play it because his curve wasn't good enough. 
And you said this young priestess wasn't the best pickup from the Dark Peddler, but here it's going to clear off a Flame Imp. Maybe it'll probably keep it on the board, but it had the potential of clearing off the Flame Imp, and it's going to be buffing these minions one more time. Now a 4-5 Nerubian. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I also said it would do some work as well sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the, the idea as well, like the additional one health actually makes like the mass more awkward. You're so used to dealing with like, okay, I need X damage to deal with this minion. And then you have to do like really funky trades to try and clear off, for example, this 4-5. But Kaglorin is just going to have lethal here. He's got the Doom Guard coming down for 16 damage on board, and that's enough to, you know, shut Muzzy out of this game relatively early. Yeah, Raven is probably starting to question my my game knowledge because the two <laughs> things that have pulled him definitively so far since he arrived in America was that uh, Control Warrior is the best <laughs> deck and the Sea Giant Zeus is better than the Doom Guard Zeus. So, uh, I'm feeling pretty good at the He's moment. Feeling pretty good. To feeling be pretty fair, good. Leroy would have done the same thing as Doomguard there. True. Yeah, and he wouldn't have discarded cards and given that's up true. information. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, that's a, a pretty quick win for Kaglorin. And um, talked about the, the Sea Giant keeping the mulligan, but you got to keep it with a good curve. Mm -hmm. And Kaglorin had one of the dream openings oh, it was uh, great. for Zoo players. And a lot of times the opening is what dictates the pace of the game in Zoo vs. Mirrors. Right. Yeah, well, one of the like at least positive things for Muzzy is that he uh, Kaglorin lost his Warlock in the mirror, mm -hmm. whereas Muzzy still has the potential of going Zoo versus Druid. Mm -hmm. So like that could just be like, okay, well, if I get the Zoo versus Druid matchup, then it's not a guaranteed win, of course, but it's definitely favored. So he can mm -hmm. be like, right, okay, you know, I'll get that matchup, then hopefully the other lineups work out better. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's definitely thinking, you know, okay, I've got a favorable matchup. My Zoo's most likely going to get a win, and then he's going to be in the same position as Kaglorin. And from there, it's, you know, two of the same matchup and I mean do you want to go two mirrors what are you thinking is the best matchup for these guys well a lot of times I know especially Muzzy he's one of the players that doesn't really have a plan when he goes into his deck selection um, a lot of players are like that they say you know what just throw out a deck because yeah. especially in the early stages it doesn't matter too much you have to win with all your decks there could be times where you dodge a really bad matchup like if you have freeze mage you're trying to dodge warrior um, but other than that it's uh, a lot of times it's just throw out a deck Hope it wins. Hope your preparation uh, for creating your deck lineup is what's going to pull you through instead of your deck selection actually in the I match. But it looks like we're jumping into game number two here. Glorin throwing out the Paladin. And uh, Muzzy once again sticking with the Warlock. The Secret Keeper just warms my heart. Secret uh, it just makes me happy. Oh, yeah? <laughs> it just makes me happy. And I am sure I'm the only person saying that. Everybody in the audience is probably like, ugh, can we get rid of the Secret Keepers for once in our life? And I'm like, no, yeah. they're staying. Looking at this zoo list, though, so again, that Sea Giant's definitely a card that will benefit from playing against Paladin. Oh, absolutely. You know, one, the, the natural oh, ability of hero yeah. power, but also cards like Muster, and you know, Paladin wanting to build up the board as much as possible because Challenger is, is a lot better when there's a board. But we do see that not the best opening hand for Muzzy, actually, whereas yeah. uh, Kuglorin's looking really good here. Look at this. Okay, turn one Secret Keeper, turn two Noble Sacrifice Avenge, which are the two best secrets to play together, especially in the early game and especially against a deck like Zoo. And then he can coin into a four drop on turn three. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Muzzy gave a little face there, like, whoa. <laughs> this oh. is So this is what I'm dealing with. Um, he looks like being quite a bit of trouble. You know, in game Boss is, is one of those mm -hmm. cards, though, that contests a lot of boards really well. And Paladin is one of those boards that in game Boss can uh, do a lot of work for. He's got Power Overwhelming. He's got Dark Peddler, which can draw into Power Overwhelming or Abusive Sergeant. And in game Boss is almost always going to leave behind at least an Imp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the uh, only sort of positive for Muzzy at the moment is that there's no muster. Because mm -hmm. one of the, the really good things when you've got just an Imp Gang Boss on the, on the opposite side of the board is you can hit that like uh, and generate the 1-1 tokens, mm -hmm. but then clear them up with the weapon. So it's really clean. So uh, because he can actually, he doesn't have that, you know, it's going to be a little bit more awkward, but definitely having the secrets on board that are now going to revenge something. He's probably really hoping that goes on that Secret Keeper so that that minion will just never die at all. It's going to give Kaglorin such an edge here. And uh, I mean, that Shredder, just such a solid minion. The best four drop in the game at the moment. And we do see the Avenge going on to the Secret Keeper. A 6-3 one drop. Dare I say the return of Undertaker days? That's scary. <laughs> yeah, you, you could, but don't. Yeah. Um, All right, fair enough. Even I don't want to give you nightmares. Even as a Hunter player, I, I didn't particularly enjoy that phase. <laughs> um, this is a weird situation, though. It's not often where, as a Paladin player, you have Keeper of Oldemine in your hand. And using it on any, either of your creatures is a downgrade. Mm -hmm. And using it on any of your opponent's creatures gives them an upgrade. <laughs> so it's his, it's his only turn four, or, or it's his, you know, 
main turn four play, but it, it seems like he is going to go with the Shield of Minibot and Competitive Spirit because he realizes that Keeper Voldemort is a liability no matter how he plays it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there was a, a small chance that, uh, that you could think about maybe attacking him with the Secret Keeper to kill the 2-2 making it have one health, and then all the minute to go back to 3-3. Three, yeah. three. Just because, yeah, you lose a lot of the attack, but you keep the minion alive and quite healthy, so it doesn't, you know, die as easily. So th there is potential for that, but I think just a straightforward play there with the secondary secret and, uh, and the mini belt is pretty good. Yeah, for sure. And we see Voidwalker, Young Dragonhawk, and Corruption coming from Musley's Dark Peddler. Voidwalker, just the best of the three. But it know. needs to be said, Young Dragonhawk <laughs> with Power Overwhelming has some potential. It's definitely a stylish way to end the game. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. It's a rare pick, though. You have to have, like, the perfect situation. Oh, yeah. Knowing that your Young Dragonhawk's going to live to to see another turn is something that you can never truly uh, count on. But... Uh, one thing, Kagorin, uh, it does seem like he's in the lead, but Zoo can do some pretty crazy things with the board, and Kagorin does not have the Mysterious Challenger yet. So uh, since Muzzy had, had the first turn, he's going to be in a situation where his Dr. Boom comes down first, so he'll have a chance to react given Kagorin doesn't draw into the Mysterious Challenger. Yeah, and I think even if he does, it's not going to be the end of the world because we've already seen a good you know, a good selection of secrets. Like, it's not going to uh, bring in competitive spirit now, unless, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Kagorin might be running two, but the standard is to see one. Yeah. So that's already gone. So the overall turn isn't as powerful as it normally is, but Kagorin's definitely, you know, cashed in on the fact that that Secret Keeper makes pl having secrets so mm -hmm. much better. Yeah, likely the Mysterious Challenger would bring out just another Noble Sacrifice and Avenge and potentially a Redemption. Yeah. Occasionally you see Repentance coming out of the Secret Paladin. It's not quite as likely, but it is a nice tech occasionally. Not quite as good against the Zoo deck, but we do see Dr. Boom in Muzzy's hand, so potentially if he top decks the Mysterious Challenger here, plays it out, could get a really nice repentance on that Boom. It's all speculation at this point, but yeah. uh, Kaglorin's field is looking pretty solid at this point. Yeah. Muzzy does have the advantage, though, as playing the Zoo, where uh, a lot of the time, Secret uh, Paladin actually just dries up a little bit in terms of cards mm -hmm. and hand size, unless they play like a Divine Favor and then get a good one off. Whereas playing Zoo, you can, from like turn five onwards, you normally just freely tap, because you can tap, still use a lot of your cards because they're so low cost, and then just keep cycling through. And that, because he's not so far behind, that might actually be enough to just push out the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just definitely abuse that hero power, get two cards per turn as opposed to the Paladin. But the Paladin has some really nice top decks. It also has some very weak ones. If he just picks up those secrets instead of the Mysterious Challenger or the Tyrion, um, potentially a Sludge Belcher or a Lotheb, he could shut out the game with those cards, but uh, Secrets or a Muster for Battle might not even be so effective in the coming turns. Yeah, and there's even cards like uh, Creeper, another Secret Keeper, mm -hmm. you know, like just has such a uh, low impact early on. Uh, so it, it, it could be rough. Is uh, after this Doctor Boom gets uh, you know gets cleared Ooh. up, or there is a Tyrion though. There's you the just draw into Tyrion and it's you're all good. Yeah. Uh, well, Secret uh, Mysterious Challenger is sort of like a, a feast or famine type card because if you don't draw it, you have more secrets in your deck that are not that great by themselves usually. And if you do draw it, it takes the secrets out of your deck, so you're more likely to draw into the things yeah. that that are better. Yeah. And uh, that's how Hearthstone works in general. You know, when you, if you draw your good cards early. You, your lower cards early, you're more likely drawn to your bigger threats later. But Bashir's Challenger, you know, makes that even uh, exponentially yeah. more effective because mm -hmm. you're pulling so many cards out of your deck. And we see the general answer to a Doctor Boom is just another Doctor Boom. <laughs> and uh, you know, maybe the Boombox will actually do more damage because you know Kaglorin actually has got Golden One, whereas Muzzy's been a little bit slack, I think. Uh, That's maybe, true. maybe he had both, and he's already disenchanted the Golden One. <laughs> it's true, yeah. That's the first points of damage that Muzzy has managed to do to the face of Kaglorn, and it came from a boom bot. You know what? Better late than never. Yeah, that's true. Going to so go ahead and power overwhelming the egg, probably run into the Keeper of Uldemon. Um, it's worth saying if Kaglorn had chosen to save the Keeper instead of using it on his own recruit, he would have had a really easy way of getting rid of that Dr. Boom. Yeah, and this is going to be rough, so Muzzy's probably going to be forced into just trading the booms here and hoping what's left on board is going to be enough to power through. But I think this is actually still relatively close. Um, the, the Tyrion's going to be really rough to deal with, and I think that's going to be the stopping point. But um, if, uh, if Muzzy has an owl in his deck, which the zoos sometimes do tech one, yeah. Yeah. then it'll be a... I mean, he'll have two draws for it. Yeah. It's unlikely, but it would be huge at this moment in time. Without it, that Tyrion just... Yeah. I mean, it's going to soak up so much damage. So this is a crucial moment right here. So Muzzy realizes that he's behind uh, almost all aspects. He does have board, but he has to, you know, account for the boom bots. 
he looks like he wants to take a risky trade. And when you're in a situation where you have realized that you're falling mm -hmm. so far behind, sometimes the risky play is the right one. He decides not to. Yeah. I actually, I, I would have liked going a little bit greedy there. I understand why he chose not to. Mm. He doesn't know that there's a Tyrion coming out next turn. He might think well, maybe he's got a handful of secrets and something useless. We know, unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, if he had chosen to trade into the 3-2, it could have been that the Boombots couldn't have killed the Voidwalker and, uh, you know, the yeah, Dr. Boom would have gotten yeah. some yeah. great value. But uh, this is, I mean, this is rough. This is rough for Muzzy. Muzzy looked like he okay, felt so physical pain when the boom mm -hmm. bots killed his low them. <laughs> so he needs the juggle to hit Tyrion and then a buff card to clear off. Probably wanted Abusive Sergeant. Yeah, but the power of uh, is okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or Corruption. Way to just... turn and hope that's enough, <laughs> which it uh. almost certainly won't be. Try and bait your opponent into silencing their own Tyrion to get rid of the Corruption. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it, that might be a play if Toon wasn't a 6-6 six, six anyway. Uh, so it's definitely a little bit rough. still too good. Yeah. Or you could pick Zombie Chow and then do the old escape concede. Yeah. It's an option. Oh, and he might have heard you because that looks oh. like it could be the play. He got the knife, though. Yeah. Oh, dear. I think he he wanted the extra juggle to try and uh, mm -hmm. pick off the Silverhand Recruit. Yeah. He realizes that if he kills off Tyrion this turn, you know, that's just that's speeding, up, it's speeding up his death. Uh, yeah, and that is going to be game. Muzzy doesn't find the juggle, and that means Kaglorian is going up two to zero in this series. So Muzzy's on sort of his his last like this isn't upper bracket mm -hmm. match, mm -hmm. um, so it's it's not an elimination match. But going down to the lower bracket is still a big deal. It's still pretty early in the day, so it means that. Uh, um, they're going to have to fight through a lot. But uh, we actually do have Frodan standing by. I know it's been a while since we've had some updates, <laughs> since we had uh, all those delays. But Dan is going to help us out with some updates from what's going on across the Americas. It's been too long, TJ. I feel like we don't even know each other anymore. But uh, I'll try to update you with every relevant information that I can. The first is to talk about who is moving on. So uh, we do have Dear Jason, a player who did really well in 2014's America's Championship. Uh, he upset Silent Storm in the winner's bracket. Two Titans going at it. If you know their ladder players, you know the reputations at stake if you're a pro player. But to some of the people, they don't really know them that well. But you should know that that was a pretty big deal. Uh, another person that's been uh, keeping attention to people is Phone Tap. He has dropped into the lower bracket uh, pretty early on, being upset. Uh, also, Kit Kats had to beat uh, the Rat and push him into a lower bracket, and then the Rat ended up being eliminated straight afterwards. So there's a lot of movement in the brackets here and there. Lots of cool stuff. Uh, the last one that I wrote down here was that Lucas, a player from Sao Paulo, did end up upsetting VLPS, sending him to the lower bracket. So even though we do see some established players and fan favorites moving on, we also have a handful of players who are up and coming and definitely challenging the throne. So let's give it back over to TJ, hear their thoughts on those match results, and get back to the games. Thank you very much, Dan. Always great to hear from Dan, Frodan, Joe. But uh, we actually are still underway with one of the matches here. This is a third round match, upper bracket, between Muzzy and Kigloran. Gorn is, is up two to zero, and he only has the Druid left remaining. So, Raven, uh, how, what is Muzzy feeling like being in a situation where he has to beat a Druid three times in a row? Yeah, it's definitely probably not one of the best decks you want to really face three times mm -hmm. to, uh, to definitely not drop a game, but he does have some potentially good matchups. The Druid Mirror is probably going to be a mirror match mm -hmm. in terms of mid-range Druid. I know we said that in the, uh, the Chaki match, and then we saw Aggro, so... A few things might change there, but we are going to this game, which is Kogloran on the Druid and Muzzy with his Warlock. So this is one of the things where you know what they're actually going to pick when they've only got one deck left. So you just pick yeah. a good matchup, take the win, because, you know, why not at this point? And look at Muzzy's hand right now. If you, like, looked at his face when he drew this hand, he looked kind of surprised at first, but definitely happy. And you're thinking, this is an amazing hand. But then look at Kigloran's hand as yeah. well. He's got the ramp. He's got the Keeper of the Grove, which is so great at stopping those Flame Imps, a Knife Juggler silencing an egg, and then the Azure Drake to come out right after it. Yeah. Muzzy was like, oh, yeah, I do run these cards in my deck. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen them in my opening hand. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, Kaglorin. Uh, an Innervate is is something that is, is also crucial to a Druid start uh, to their early game against Zoo, because even if they do have the Wild Growth and Keeper, sometimes it's just not enough. They need that extra mile to be able to deal with the in-game boss too, and uh, so usually... Just deal with everything. Yeah. 
Um, but this is a, definitely a favored matchup for Zoo, so we'll have to see if, if Kagorin can fight the uphill battle. He's got that peace of mind knowing that he has three chances, though. Yeah, absolutely, and it's a tough mulligan. You can consider getting rid of the Azure Drake. He decides to keep it and just go for the nice curve, and even that Force of Nature pick up there, actually pretty good against the Zoo deck, but you'll most likely just use it to clear off minions. And yeah. we see the Leroy Jenkins in Muzzy's hand. Uh, TJ, you were right. Uh, well, okay, so uh, <laughs> this deck that, that Muzzy's deck is based off of is from a, a popular Chinese player named Duke, uh, who, holds rank, who held rank one in January, December for, for quite a long time. Um, it, it runs Leroy, it runs no Doom Guards, and it runs Enhancement Mechano, which is usually what it is, uh, with uh, less one-drops. Mm -hmm. um, but I know a lot of North American players have been experimenting with making the deck a little bit faster with more one-drops, but still keeping that core of no Doom Guards, Leroy Jenkins as a finisher, but mostly still the same Zoo core with yep. Imp Gang bosses and, and Flame Amps, Void, void uh, um, Walkers as well. So mm -hmm. uh, a pretty cool deck. It's my favorite Zoo deck right now. Yeah, and it's uh, going to be interesting whether Co uh, Coglorin's actually expecting, you know, this specific one. The second you see an handsome Meccano come out, uh, it's always going to be a little bit worrying. But <laughs> even uh, Muzzy now, uh, even having access to the second Imp Gang boss is pretty huge. He can either choose to just play that slightly off curve and mm -hmm. then just generate so many tokens that then Gormok becomes playable. Uh, but it is going to just feel very off curve, which it never feels too great. But I think it's too good of an opportunity because this board just isn't really AoEable like at all. Yeah, it's a bit awkward. He's definitely not unhappy about it, though. Think about if he'd had a power overwhelming in hand, though, how dominant his position would be right now. Yeah. And then he'd even have the Gormonk, too. You, you could tell Muzzy thought about playing the Gormonk onto an empty board. Uh, it is more power immediately over an Imp Gang boss, but he realizes that, you know, with two Imp Gang bosses on the board and an egg, he's almost for sure going to have. Uh, that activation, uh, as Raven mm -hmm. was sort of uh, alluding to for, for the next turns. And having that board control uh, with the Gormak is super important in the Druid matchup especially, I think. Yeah, and uh, Kaglorin's got some options here. You can go with, like as your Drake and then generate the two 1-1s one yep. uh, from the Living Roots just to put something on the board because he needs to start controlling this because already he's on 21 health. And that is scary. And as, as you said earlier, Cora, like if there's a power of Whelming in hand, then that becomes such a good trade for the Zoo player, and they get a 4-4 to deal with. And there's already a 4-4 in hand that's, mm -hmm. you know, quite likely to come down next turn with the potential of double trade from the uh, from the gang boss. That is a swipe though as well, so that's gonna probably yeah. feel that's pretty good so for next strong. turn. Yeah, one one card that Zoo struggles with though is Dr. Boom. <laughs> well, one card that one most card that, <laughs> that <laughs> players pretty much struggle everybody with. Struggles with. <laughs> yeah, in a vacuum, Drew, uh, Zoo struggles with the Dr. Boom, so. Um, but they have to use a lot of resources to kill it off, usually. Mm -hmm. but this is a really, really good Gormok. Clear off that Azure Drake very cleanly. Going to be able to clear off the other one with the 1-1 one, one Imps that came out of the Imp Gang boss. And he's still got an egg on board that he can use for activation. Doesn't have anything in hand right now, but with the Light Tap, it's likely that he'll draw an Abusive Sergeant, a Power Overwhelming, something that can make his board even stronger at this point. But uh, we do see Dr. Boom in Kaglorin's hand swipe to clear up those minions and innervate. If that wasn't enough, he's got Force of Nature for board clear, so... Yeah, I, I think the um, the tokens being able to trade into the 4-2 Drake as well is pretty, just pretty off-putting for the swipe, because suddenly mm -hmm. the swipe, like, it's good to kill the Gormok, but doesn't really do much else, whereas getting Boom on the board, and then you just follow up with things like Swipe into Shredder or something, mm -hmm. which is such a swing uh, for, for the Druid player here. As, as we can see, Muzzy's struggling a little bit. I mean, Argus is pretty good just to maybe get down that egg, just to force a proc, because he doesn't have Power Overwhelming yeah. yet, so that might do some work, but... As we said, Booms, one of those cards, especially for Warlock, it's uh, pretty <laughs> difficult to deal with. Especially, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, I mean, yeah, he can put himself in a decent board position at the end of this turn, but Boombots can do some terrible, terrible things. It's not even can do. Boombots will yeah. do terrible things. Yeah. And he's got a uh, taunt now buff on these two eggs, which is nice. It'll come four fours out of there, but... Uh, I mean, if the Boombats clear it off, he's got Force of Nature. He's yeah. got the Doctor Boom. Yeah, I can't. I can't see this board sticking around. Yeah, I think Muzzy's doing the correct play here. Of when someone plays Doctor Boom, you just need to close your eyes and pretend it doesn't exist, um, <laughs> and just to just hope it's all a bad dream. But uh, in in terms of actually buffing up the eggs, is really strong because the odds on the Boombots doing that much work on this board is so small because of the two eggs uh, potentially proccing four fours, and just going aggressive is actually really good because he has Leroy. Like, that's mm -hmm. six damage out of nowhere, and unless, you know, a big taunt comes up that you can't deal with, he even has the Owl. So, you know, just pushing for that extra damage is really good, and you can see uh, Muzzy potentially closing this game out pretty quick. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, and uh, there's also a likelihood that uh, modern Zoo players with Dark Peddler can get three Power Overwhelmings. 
that's pretty good. Yeah, since the Dark that's Pedal, of course, pays class cards a little bit more. Uh, they never expect the old Leroy Jenkins triple Tripping. power overwhelming from hand. So, And also, if they were playing Bran, hmm. they could get even more. They could, yeah. That's true. <laughs> well, Four <you> power <laughs> overwhelmings. Oh, man. Um, Kaglorin is going to be able to silence off the egg with the most health, and then... Uh, Looks like he's just going to go ahead and swipe the Gormok, possibly clear off the 4-4, four four, I would think. It's a tough choice, this, isn't it? Because he, he does have Force of Nature, which mm -hmm. could just potentially, you know, along with Boom attacking again, just kill him next turn. So it's one of those things where it's like, ah, I'm not going to trade and just uh, hopefully just go for the win. Okay, he chooses not to, but now if Muzzy draws power overwhelming, uh. he's got 6, 10, 12, 16 uh, with the 4 from PO. It will be one off now because Kaglorin does decide to innervate hero power. That's a really smart move by him. Yeah, he, he can hero power into, say, like, a, oh, no, he won't have enough mana, right? Oh, a little, little late there. Oh. Um, He's got to tap for something. Yeah, but what does he even tap for? Uh, the, the Duke list that this list is sort of uh, uh, similar to mm -hmm. runs Big Game Hunter. Really? But... You know, I, I said a lot of American players tweak with it a little bit. Mm -hmm. yep. They take the base. Um, it, it's a, it's hard for a lot of people to put Big Game Hunter in Zoo deck and feel good about it. Yeah. Uh, but it, it does wonders. So maybe he does have that, but I mean, it's it's a one of, if that, and okay. Oh, yeah, I, I like this play though, because nothing he could tap for would actually mm -hmm. impact the game in, yeah. in like the, as a whole. Whereas this is like, okay, if you don't win now, I'm going to destroy you next turn, because I he, still have Leroy. He so. could have played the Leroy to clear off the boom, but with yeah. that Savage Roar top deck, Kaglorn is going to take this match a quick 3-0 over Muzzy. Yeah, and that that's a really impressive performance. We, we talked about how Correa, another Brazilian player, mm -hmm. was eliminated earlier, so Kaglorn sort of uh, representing Brazil and to an extent representing South America because this th this is the America's Championship. Mm -hmm. There's players from Argentina, there's players from Chile, there's um, also players from... Uh, Mexico. Um, so there's a, a lot of different um, players from all over the place. I, I think the Toronto Fireside Gathering too. If we're if we're going up to the to the <laughs> north side of things, uh, was the most populated. So uh, it, it, it's really a, a a team effort for the Americas <laughs> mm -hmm. coming across here. Um, but you know what what is Muzzy going to have to do to sort of get back into his positive psyche and move forward into this. He's not eliminated. Yeah, I mean, he has a lot of experience in playing in, you know, uh, you know opens on ladders especially. So I think he just has to just put it out of his mind. But it's going to be really difficult because that was a pretty hard stump, I think. Uh, a lot of the games just didn't go his way whatsoever. And that just always feels bad because you start to think about, okay, that just went, mm -hmm. didn't go well. And is this going to happen again? Because if it happens again, then th that's it. Yeah, And especially losing a matchup like Zoo versus Druid when his hand was so strong. He pretty much had everything he could have wanted, curved into boom, but it just wasn't enough. The Druid basically did Druid things, things that we're not always happy to see, but Kaglorin's probably really happy about it. Mm -hmm. With that early 3-0, Muzzy is going to have to you know, find a way to muscle up some positivity to make it back into uh, into the game yeah. from well the lower bracket. Well, Muzzy's a pretty positive guy. Um, he, he actually, he played Zoo uh, in his ladder finishes where he finished top 10 a lot. So uh, even if you get top 10, you, you still get used to losing. You still mm -hmm. get l used to having those bad draws. So uh, I know he's, he's not going to let him affect it, uh, affect him too much. Uh, but Kaglorin's strategy of bringing, you know, three popular and proven to be strong ladder decks seem to be a good strategy. Do you agree with this as we move forward into the tournament, Raven? Yeah, I think um, th there really is. I know we've like, discussed it a little bit mm -hmm. before where there's two, there's overall uh, on a base level two mm -hmm. strategies of either you just bring what the like deemed best decks are overall um, or you try and like counter the meta and bring something to beat those decks. But, you know, these decks are the most popular and perform the best overall for a reason. And I think it's completely valid to be able to just I'm bringing these decks that perform consistently for the majority of, you know, the big players and, yeah. you know, and they do some work. So it's pretty reasonable. Yeah, and Cora, you're a secret paladin advocate, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I don't mean, know if you're comfortable with me calling you that live, but... Uh, people <laughs> are going to hate me. Thanks, TJ. No, I mean, how can you argue with a secret keeper that turns into like a 9-3 from secret yeah. keeper, you know, noble sacrifice, avenge, competitive spirit? It's, you hate it. But you can't deny that it's really, really strong. And you it only was dislike it when you're on the strong. receiving end. Though. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. When you're the one playing it, feels good, man. Or in the mirror when your, your opponent draws slightly better than you, uh, then you can hate it too. But yeah, uh, yeah Muzzy, move, we'll move down to the lower bracket. Uh, so we'll we'll keep an eye on him as the as the day mo moves forward. And uh, Kaglorin, um, we'll move up to uh, keep going in the upper bracket. I think he's going on to round four. Uh, so he's making his way through this tournament uh, with with a lot of steam. 
Um, so, you know, we, we've seen a couple of the other players that have made it to the upper bracket. Um, how do you think it, that latter style is going to match up against uh, some of these other deck lineups that we've seen that have, like, Freeze Mage uh, or a deck where he won't be able to afford to ban Warrior? Yeah, it's going to be really interesting because we've seen so far that, especially in that set, it's performed pretty well. You mm. just take the good decks and, yeah. and you know, just w take the game there. But uh, I think it might suffer a little bit if someone's actually brought lineups, um, similar to what Chaki was saying mm -hmm. in his interview, that he's like, he's brought a lineup that he believes will beat something like Paladin or just the popular decks in general. If mm. he, like, faces someone like that, it could be really difficult because it's like almost as if someone's teched their decks to beat you. So that's yeah. going to be going to be one of the rough things. But if he can manage to dodge these players, he could go really far. Yeah. All right, well, well, we'll have to check in up on Kagorin later uh, as we see how far he makes the, the tournament. Um, but in the meantime, let's once again head over to Froden, who's standing by with some more juicy updates. Thanks, TJ. That was way too long since we last talked, man. I still feel the empty void in my heart. But speaking of void, we have an update on some players. APX Void from Team Hearthletics has advanced to round number four in the winner's bracket. He is also joined by Nostam and Kit Kats. Nostam had to beat Dart, a player that we brought up earlier from the Southern California region. Uh, definitely some upsets, but also expected for some of these players. When you look at the list, overall, the talent pool is enormous. You can't really expect to cruise into it, uh, willing to just go ahead and beat everybody. It's just, it takes more than willpower. It takes a lot of preparation and a little bit of skill here. Uh, we also want to uh, thank everybody who's been able to tune in. You guys have been sending awesome stuff. Uh, we do also recognize that people actually have been sending in their haikus. Uh, if you want to get them featured, continue to try and see your best if you can feature it by hashtagging the HTC. Tweet at us at Play Hearthstone and go to Facebook.com slash Hearthstone. Share us your other favorite moments as well. People are talking about casters and how they dress. They're talking about the games and their favorite decks. Uh, all kinds of things are fair play. Make sure, again, hashtag HCT. Unfortunately, we don't have an interview, but we do have another great game coming up right after this break. I'm Frodan. When we return, more Hearthstone Championship Tour for the Americas Preliminaries. Stay tuned.